Hello, everyone. I'm Ming Wang from I and ENT Hospital of Fudan University. I would like to thank Heidelberg Engineering for inviting me to give this presentation. Multicolor imaging technology is one of the highlights in Heidelberg's multimodal imaging family. First of all, I want you to look at two fundus images of the same eye of diabetic retinopathy. The one on the left is the conventional color fundus photo. The one on the right is the multicolor image. Which one give us more information? I would say multicolor. What does multicolor image come from? Actually, multicolor images are taken by using the confocal scanning laser ophthalmoscope to capture three simultaneous reflectance images with three individual laser wavelengths, which is blue, green, and infrared. These different wavelengths of monochromatic light penetrate the retina surfaces at the different depth to show details at the various layer of the retina. Blue reflectance particularly enable details of the inner retina and visual retinal interface. The green reflectance images specifically allow deeper details such as retinal blood vessels and intraretinal lipid exudation to be seen. Infrared reflectance predominantly visualizes structure at the level of the outer retina and choroid. This is normal 3-degree multicolor images, and this is a normal 50-degree multicolor images. I would like to show some in clinical cases by using multicolor imaging technology. The first case is epiretinal membrane. On multicolor image, we can appreciate the structural changes on epiretinal membrane. Also, epiretinal membrane stand out on blue and green reflectance. Combining with OCT, the epiretinal membrane showed clearly. So, multicolor imaging demonstrates better structural changes than color from this photo on epiretinal membrane. This is a patient with acute central serous choreal retinopathy. Multicolor image demonstrates a green area which corresponds to the area of subretinal fluid. Color from this photo does not show subretinal fluid well. PED showed up on multicolor as well as blue reflectance. Infrared reflectance reveals RPE changes. OCT showed subretinal fluid and PED. In a case of chronic central serous choroid retinopathy, RPE abnormalities look more obvious on multicolor than on color from this photo. These abnormalities showed as greenish patches around the macula, which does not show up well on color from this photo. These abnormalities also represent on infrared reflectance. Combining with OCT, we saw RPE abnormalities and subretinal fluid. In dry AMD with geographic atrophy, multicolor image has its advantage. The area of the atrophy was demarcated better than color from this photo. Infrared reflectance showed the best on RPE atrophy. In blue and green reflectance, as well as multicolor, we can see RPE migrations. Multicolor imaging is very useful to look at the reticular pseudojuicence. On this case, those green yellowish patches on multicolor in macular area corresponds to the pseudojuicence on OCT on the right eye. On the left eye, we saw similar changes on multicolor and infrared reflectance. 
We even see CMV on OCT. Here comes a case of polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy. The lesion can be seen in this area on Califanta's photo. ICGA and FA confirm that there are polypoidal lesion and abnormal branch vascular network. They all showed up on OCT as well. Polyps can be seen on blue, green, and multicolor images. BVN and RPE changes showed up well on infrared reflectance. OCT angiography also discovered the polyps and BVN nicely. Multicolor imaging combining with OCTA and ICGA can fully detect the pathology of PCV. In central retinal vein occlusion, retinal arteries and veins can be seen clearly in light and dark green color on multicolor image. Macular edema showed as dark green on multicolor. The hemorrhage looks more obvious on green reflectance. However, these changes does not show well on color from this photo. Of course, OCT has the power to confirm macular edema. In the case of branch retinal vein occlusion, the details of the retinal branch vessels on multicolor can be demonstrated better than color from this photo. Cotton wool spot can be seen clearly on multicolor and green reflectance. OCT showed retinal edema. This is a case of branch retinal artery occlusion. The ischemic lesion showed in white on color from this photo and in green on multicolor. There are dark area between disc and macular in multicolor blue reflectance and green reflectance. The ischemic lesion represents as hyperreflective and thick inner retina on OCT. When B scan passed through the dark area on multicolor, we saw palm lesion on OCT. After four months, inner retinal edema disappeared. But we noticed that the inner retinal atrophy in the ischemic area on OCT, especially on inner nuclear layer. In MACTEL type 1, we saw some exudates in the macula on color from this photo. Microaneurysm can be observed on fluorescing angiography. This is the early phase, this middle phase, and in the late phase, we see the leakage of the dye. There are some light and dark green dots in the macula on multicolor and some white dots on blue and green reflectance. Comparing with FA, we can find the locations of microaneurysm on green reflectance. OCTB scan across the macular aneurysm on multicolor showed hyporeflective lesions on cross-sectional image. The light green dots on multicolor corresponds to the exudates on OCT. OCT angiography nicely showed the macular aneurysm in superficial, intermediate, and deep capillary plexus. In angioid streaks like this case, multicolor imaging is able to demonstrate the streaks better than color from this photo. Fundus autofluorescence and OCT showed the optic disc drusen. OCT found CMV as well. This patient got leukemia. We saw scattered hemorrhages on his fundi with rust spots on color fundus photo.
scattered hemorrhages and rust spots also showed clearly on multicolor blue reflectance and green reflectance. The rust spot corresponds to a localized hyperreflective lesion in retinal nerve fiber layer. We also see the macular hemorrhages. For mute patient, multicolor has its advantage to reveal those dotted lesion. Combining with OCT, we can see the interrupted ellipsoid zone. In Stargardt's disease, both color fundus photo and multicolor showed macular atrophy with a beaten bronze pattern. Multicolor and other reflectance images demonstrate different structural changes on the macular lesions. OCT showed the remarkable loss of outer retinal structure and very thin fovea. The same changes on the left eye. Here comes a rare disease, which is a pigmented paravenous retinal choroidal atrophy. There are large areas of hypofluorescin along retinal vein on fundus autofluorescence. Multicolor and other wavelengths reflectance showed structural changes. These deep red patches on multicolor represent RPE migration, which was confirmed by OCT. Similar changes on the left eye. Sometimes we saw this big light spot on the image when we photograph 50 degree multicolor image, and this is artifact. We also see the ellipsoid zone loss in the peripheral retina. This is a case of X-linked juvenile retinal schesis. On color from this photo, it's not very easy to recognize the abnormality in the macular area. Fluorescing angiography looks basically normal. But when we do multicolor imaging, it showed honeycomb changes in the macula especially on blue and green reflectance, as well as multicolor on both eyes. Combining with OCT, we can tell that the patient has retinoschisis, with no doubt. This patient has uveitis on both eyes. On color from this photo, we can only see some abnormal RPE changes in the lower part of the disc. But when we perform 50-degree multicolor imaging, we notice that there are some obvious changes of RPE in the mid-peripheral retina on blue, green, and infrared reflectance, as well as multicolor on the right eye. The OCT B scan across the dark red area on multicolor image showed the loss of ellipsoid zone. The same changes on the left eye. It's even more obvious in the periphery. This is a case of multifocal choroiditis. 50 degree multicolor images demonstrate all multifocal lesions in one view. When we scan with OCT, it showed the lesion obviously. For choroidal hemangioma, we can vaguely see a lesion in the superior temporal retina on color from this photo. When we perform multicolor imaging, we can clearly observe the margin of the hemangioma and structural changes in different wavelength reflectance as well as multicolor. They are even clearer on 30 degree multicolor view. Plus OCT, we can confirm the diagnosis. The last case is the labor hereditary optic neuropathy. 
you may notice that the temporal portion of the disc is pale on each eye. The mitochondrial DNA mutation site was 11778. The blue reflectance showed the retinal nerve fiber layer defect obviously on both eyes. With OCT confirmed defects. In summary, multicolor scanning laser imaging is an innovative technology for fundus imaging, offering detail and clarity not available from traditional color fundus photo. Multicolor imaging has many clinical applications, and in some cases, it may be used to replace conventional color fundus photo. Further study will need to validate the retinal details seen on multicolor imaging with conventional color fundus photo and other imaging modalities. We need to be familiar with the color variations and artifacts of multicolor imaging. Thank you for your attention.